What's up, bros, and welcome to the BroGraph Brocast. I'm Dave Koss. And I'm Matt Milstead. So what's going on, man? How was the last couple of weeks for you? Uh, it was it was pretty good, you know, just hanging out, still haven't uh, had a chance to get my R17 up and going, so I'm kind of lame like that. We do a tutorial site where we all need to be fresh and new, and I still <laughs> haven't done it, so. Isn't that funny, man? Like, <clears throat> back in the day, like, when I didn't have the software, like, I just wanted it so bad, and... Mm-hmm. Like now I get my automatic upgrade thingy in the email and I download it and I install it and I'm like, yeah, I'll check this out over the weekend. And then I literally have not touched it. Yeah. yeah there's I, not enough. There's, yeah. there's not enough hours in the day I to well, do everything I want to do. I've used it for one thing mm-hmm. <laughs> because I was using R16. <laughs> bookcase. Yeah, to make a bookcase. Right. <laughs> no, actually, I used it to import a Google SketchUp model. Oh, that's cool. Because I needed like a real quick uh, model of something as a placeholder. And I was like, oh, this is perfect. And I converted it and I saved the file and then I opened it on another computer on R16. <laughs> because I, I mean, I have all my plugins and stuff installed over there. I'm lazy and I don't want to install everything yet. That's funny. You know, I'm like, oh, I don't want to move Octane. And Yeah, I saw a question today yeah. that you answered. It was the, uh, uh, can you just, does Octane work with R17? And you said just move over the lib file. Is that correct? That is what I had heard. Mm-hmm. And I was like, uh, from what I hear in the forum, that's what you need to do. And he went and did it and he said it worked. Cool. But what I'm wondering is if there is going to be an R17 lib file pretty soon, or if you can just stick with 16 for now. Dude, all these companies and their plugins. Uh, I wonder, don't get me started. They'll probably on how, wait. How for... they 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 just don't want to communicate. Hmm. It's mm-hmm. fine. Whatever. Don't give us any updates. Just drop us a little hint here and there. Well, the dude in get the forums who said it worked. At the mouth. He said he he the dude who said it worked in the forums was from. Octane. He was the guy that does maintains the Cinema 4D version of Octane. So. Oh, really? Yeah, that was a good source. That's why I was like, okay, it works. But well, well good. Yeah, but okay. I haven't tried it myself. <laughs> All but right. whoever tried it said it worked. But I don't think they're going to do a specific R17, honestly, until they do Octane 3. That's just yeah. my yeah my thought. Which who knows it. when that's going to be? Yeah, it'd be nice if they said something about that. I know. So we had a new tutorial this week. You did a new tutorial. Yeah, I did a new tutorial on octane lighting. Cool. Um, not lighting the, things. Fi- what? Finish up the octane V-Ray yeah. you know, uh, series that we've been doing, which is cool. Well, not how to light things specifically. Right. We haven't really talked about that on, on any no. tutorials yet, but it's more about how the lighting system works. Right, right. Where the settings and stuff like that. And so, yeah. Um, I had a couple questions about that, I think, in there. Um I think one of them was about why I used the fall off uh, mm-hmm. for EFF, you know, the um, efficiency and texture. Mm-hmm. It's mainly a control thing because I have more control over some of the settings in one place. Yeah. And it's really essentially the same thing. Like grazing, I think technically is a, um, is a float, basically, a, a zero to one float, if I'm oh. not mistaken. So it's just basically putting all the same things in the same place and it gives you normalization control. That's cool. Uh, that's yeah. Normalization. I, I didn't actually finish the, the tutorial. Sorry. Oh. <laughs> I, I like to watch all your tutorials, but uh, I only had a twenty-minute workout session, and you know the nice. the thing was thirty-seven minutes, so I couldn't finish it. Well, but I did not- like. I did like. I I had never thought about putting a like a black color in the environment or in the the HDRI or the sky or whatever. You know. Yes. So that you can actually like that. I thought that was really cool. Yeah, because you, know. you know how I was doing it before is I was just putting in a sunlight and I was making it like, you know, on the other side of the earth. So it was a black sky. Oh, that's funny. I didn't that's know that. How I started doing it and I was like, <laughs> wait a minute, I could just make this HDR black. That's funny. Duh. That's really funny. Duh. So yeah. that was your week um, or past good, two weeks? Man. Uh, just got back from Austin mm-hmm. this afternoon. That was fun. Went and saw Cirque de Soleil. Yeah, but um, the drone. I took the drone out, and I haven't used it since July. Right, you were uh, going to do the drone 4th. tutorial. I was going to do the drone thing. Well, not a tutorial, maybe an experiment. We'll, right. we'll see how it goes. But um, I was I was down at uh, at Bucky's truck stop Man, gas I love station. That place. Dude, oh, was that your first time going? Yeah. Oh 
man. Amy and I actually, my wife and I actually went to Bucky's this past weekend just for fun. <laughs> Are you serious? Yeah, there's one in Terrell. It's like 30 minutes away from us. You call it Terrell. I call it, you call it Terrell. I call it Terrell. Terrell. But <laughs> <laughs> I I was looking at the GoPro accessories because they have, and it's yeah. weird, the displays never have the GoPro black. Never understood that. Uh-huh. But they got the silver, they got that new uh, session camera, and they've got the like featureless one that they have that is still expensive. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> they have a million accessories, right? Like they even have one that you can strap to your dog, like it's a dog harness. And the 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 dog pro go go dog pro yeah for you for your GoPro, and <laughs> yeah. then they have the floaty one, so it floats. Oh, okay. So you don't lose it in the bottom of the ocean and. So I'm looking, and they have the chest strap. If you guys strap. haven't been to a Bucky's, by the way, oh, um, you just have to understand that this is a gas station that sells GoPros and Yeti coolers and like you know toys and and, and groceries. Did and you get some beaver nuggets? <laughs> I'm serious. Did you get beaver nuggets? This sounds like a joke, but I'm serious. Did you buy me any beaver nuggets? No. Oh my gosh, they're so good. <laughs> It, it sounds too much like dingleberry me, dingleberry for me. you don't want to try it i'm serious like the beaver nuggets i swear i gained like five pounds just eating beaver nuggets no no i'm trying to lose some weight right now they taste like uh they taste like like super maple syrupy corn pops hmm. it's like i just saw them basically oh yeah it's basically just like fried corn meal it's so good so I see this chest strap, mm-hmm. and I'm like, oh, you know what? I've always wanted a chest strap for the GoPro. There's a couple times I thought I could use it. And I'm like, well, yeah, I could order it on Amazon. But usually the GoPro prices are pretty across the board the same. Like, they don't really mark them up mm-hmm. anywhere. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'll buy it, whatever. And I bought it. And I'm like, I could use this in this in this experiment thing this mm-hmm. afternoon. I'm going to take the drone out. haven't used it in a while, and I charge it up, and I get some batteries ready and i get my controller and everything and i go out and i drive i find this area that would be great for it and i power everything up and it will not stream to the phone that sucks everything works i can fly the thing around i can take pictures with it but i can't see what i'm taking a picture of that sucks and i'm super bummed because everything i read online says you are absolutely screwed and it's covered by warranty but you have to send it in and minimum return time on this thing is eight weeks oh that's minimum that's minimum and i've heard horror stories of people sending in their their phantom Mm -hmm. and not getting them back for like a year i know i am so like if i don't know what to do i don't don't know know i mean the only thing i can think is that you'd send it in you know i know it sucks because i i want it and uh, you know you know the biggest thing about this is that Hmm. my my uh, brother-in-law and sister-in-law are having the reveal party this weekend. Oh, you were going to do a drone footage of it? Yes, they're going to do the balloon release. Oh, that's fun. And I was going to have the that drone up sucks. in the air. <laughs> and I'm pretty sure that it was supposed to be last weekend, or this weekend, and they moved it to next weekend because we were going to be out of town. Yeah. And they really wanted to have that drone shot, and now I can't do it. Mm. All I can think of is that I hang onto the drone... And I don't... And just hope for the best and right. then send it in? Well, you can take a picture and then go into the album and see if you have the shot correct. Oh, okay. You know, but that's really all I can do. And I might get it and I might not. They're going to have well, to know that. But that yeah. sucks because now I can't do the drone thing for months. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't know. Hmm. Maybe I'll try Hobby Town first and see if they... That's a good idea. It, yeah, try them out first. See if they know anything. Days. Yeah. Anyway. I could just go buy one of the 4K ones. Yeah, just do that. Yeah, you know, I got use some use some brograph money. money, right? <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, um, I any? I don't know. Have I? I don't know if I've talked to you much this week or not. Um, we no, not that a, much. A mutual friend, Alex. Mm-hmm. Uh, he he got a new job. Yeah, you were telling me about that. I haven't talked to him. That's and good. I, I had a converse, a long conversation with him, mm-hmm. and we talked about a number of things, you know, because he's moving on. He's, mm-hmm. I think this was his first job from college. Is that it, right? It was, yeah. He was like hired straight out of college. He was so, a, he's a, he started out a Maya guy and then moved over to 3DS Max when me and Dave yeah. were working together. So he's a good guy. Really so I have, good. He's really talented. I have a lot of things I'll have to tell you off the air about mm-hmm. that situation. <laughs> But um, 
we got on a couple of topics, you know, because I haven't talked to him in a while, and we got on the topic of, um, I don't want to say burning bridges, mm-hmm. not burning bridges, but mm-hmm. but kind of, yeah. I mean, that's kind of what it is. Mm-hmm. Um, about going out with some class, <laughs> yeah. You know, when you're going to leave a place and how to leave a place and, and that, because he had never really done that before. Mm-hmm. So we started talking about it. And we talked about it for a while, and I gave him some advice that he used. And uh, the next couple of days, I started thinking about that and thinking about that topic. I didn't know mm-hmm. if you want to talk about that a little bit. Sure. Yeah, I mean, when I got fired from that place, I didn't burn a bridge, even though I should have. I should have burned <laughs> the whole place down. <laughs> burned the place not down. Really. That's not a threat. <laughs> but uh, I, I started thinking about it, because, see, that's a place that I quit. I mm-hmm. quit that place. And I... Did it very nicely. Yeah, you did. I mean, yeah, you did. You bought a freaking bottle of whiskey and Scotch. toasted yourself to everyone. The Talisker. Yeah, the Talisker. That day went exactly how I planned in my head. Yeah, well, you wrote your, your you know, you had your dream board with it. <laughs> my my what? Your dream board. You my know. dream board? Yeah, you know, from The Secret. The Secret, you know, you put your dream board up there. And then it's all the things you dream about. Okay, never mind. Oh. <laughs> so that was, it well, was, it was I, your I dream a, board of your day. I, I know then, what you're talking about. Yeah. See, the problem is I have a beef with that guy from The, the Secret. Secret. Okay. Yeah. He kind of messed with Urban Coffee for a while. Oh, did he? Yeah. Dave's pretty, other podcast. Yeah. He, his podcast messed with our podcast. Hmm, it's really weird. Up. He was like having some tech dude like interfere with our ratings on Podcast Alley. Why? Because he was a beehole. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Because he doesn't really use the secret, he cheats. Mm-hmm. See, that's the funny part of the whole thing. Anyway, anyway, <laughs> my dream board was <laughs> to to take the guys out and just uh-huh. have a nice lunch with them. And all before, of our other, you know, graphics guys. Yeah, go, you know, just you know, go out, buy them some drinks and stuff, and and at the end say, hey, by the way, <clears throat> it's been nice working with you. I'm about mm-hmm. to go turn it in, and then go back have all my ducks in a row, be mm-hmm. ready to go, had a letter typed out, it was mm-hmm. real nice, had a, baller, a bottle of Talisker for my um, immediate manager, and I just went in and I said, look, here's the thing. Uh, I hate to do this to you, but I am leaving. And uh, he's like, no, oh, that sucks. And um, gave yeah, him my... You gave uh-huh. him your two-week notice, and... Gave him my two week notice. He said, "That's fine. They may go for it. They may not." And uh, gave me, um, a, you know, walked out the door. He said, "Okay, let's you leave for the day. I'm going to go talk to them. We'll see if they want you to finish out the two weeks or not." Here's the thing about this place: nobody ever quits that place. Everybody gets fired. Everyone gets fired, and it's not because we do a poor job. No, not at it's all. Just that's just how that place is. Yeah, they they, you know. They get tired of you or, or they have money off. situations or, you know, the sales guys mm-hmm. haven't gone out and sold or something like that. And so they need to let people go. In my case, yeah. it was a Maserati. <laughs> but, uh, you know, it, it was a graceful exit. That's the thing. And that's what I talked to him about. I said, make a graceful exit because you never know how it's going to come back around. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, all the people that I've always worked with throughout the years i've always ended up working with them again somehow Mm -hmm. and it's something that a lot of people don't really think about or don't care about but it could come back to to bite you right yeah like what do you do when (laughs) you leave a place and you burn a bridge and then you come back around years later and you desperately need a job and you go in for the interview and one of the people that you talked smack to at some point is the one doing the interview yeah you know it's it's a bad situation, and um, not only that, but even if it isn't somebody that's going to interview or interview you or something, like word gets around. If you do something real crazy when you leave, mm-hmm. or, or you know, like some take people, a dump on the floor, yeah, on your way out, or uh, screw something up on a computer, delete yeah. some files or any of that. Don't do that. Yeah, it's it's such it's such bad form, and I don't care how upset you are because trust me. I was in a bad place when I when I left that place. Mm-hmm. Like I, I was upset, angry, just everything wrong had happened, and it could mm-hmm. have gone so well. 
Mm-hmm. And I, I wish nothing but the worst <laughs> yep. for certain people when I left. But I didn't do anything about it. I said, you know what? I'm going to take the high road on this. Mm-hmm. I'm going to be the bigger man. I'm going to write this letter. I'm going to tell the people that I do like goodbye and thank you very much. And I'm going to be on, and I'm going to go on. And yep. I'm going to hop in my car and I'm going to listen to Today Was a Good Day on <laughs> Spotify. I'm going to drive home. And that's what I did. And it worked out perfect. And uh, then they came back and told and you not to come if, back. <laughs> they told me not to come back. But then they said, by the way, you want to do some contract work? So, I that's mean, pretty nice. you know, I mean, that's a good and way to do you're it. You're still doing that. I'm still doing it. Yeah. But, like and it's two great. years later, right? Yeah. That's pretty yeah. nice. Everything went well. And I'll tell you, I mean, It'll, it'll come back around. There's people I'm sure I'll work with again. Yeah, especially in our industry. I noticed, like, I mean, it is a very small video production world, you know? Like, uh, people who, uh, you and I did that, that commercial shoot, and, like, our DP apparently was good friends with one of my buddies from college who I'm still friends with, you know? And it's, it's crazy how we're all interconnected like that, mm-hmm. you know? So you get one bad review or something like that, or you, you burn a bridge with one person, it's gonna, you know... It's going to echo throughout the whole in, entire like community. Oh you know? man, big time, big time. Check. Out, I mean, wh- I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think of some of the the bigger coincidences that have happened. Uh, here, here's one of them in particular. <clears throat> you and I worked on a project for a client who was actually one of my clients as a sole proprietor back in the day mm-hmm. and we did uh it was the shoes thing that we did you know the was it, was it shoes or was it just a textile thing that we did and mm-hmm. it was it was <laughs> isn't that funny yeah like you get to the point where you literally can't remember the project i remember <laughs> when i used to save every project i did uh, thinking i I'm still gonna do use, that well I'm, i kind of do but i mean i'm awful about that Dude, I've got like three hard drives just filled up with old people's crap from like <laughs> seven years ago. I have that too, but when you do things thinking, I'm going to put all of this on my reel, mm-hmm. but but it gets to the point where you have done so many projects, you can't even remember what you worked on. Yeah. And so, okay, let me let me. Think. We're doing a shoe it, thing. It, 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 well, there were shoes in it. It was we did like pants and shoes. This is all pretty irrelevant, but I'm trying to refresh your memory on it. Yeah, I don't remember that. It was a 2D kind of... um, Yes. Okay, now I know what you're talking about. Okay. It's it's on the website. And and I don't even know if I told you this before. Uh, Was working with uh, another dude who is a friend of mine from way back in the day. Mm -hmm. And he came to me and said, hey, I'm putting something together for a guy. Uh, It's going to go to this guy who kind of does like... He's not really an ad agency, but he kind of pushes like package deals, you know, SEO and video and mm-hmm. media print, the whole deal. And I'm going to present this to uh, this this medical board with this guy. And we're going to say, look, here's the package we can do. Here's the type of animation we can do. Do you have anything that looks like these videos that I'm sending you here? So I can say, look, our animator did this video mm-hmm. and he can do something similar for you. And I said, well, sure. I said, here's this video, this is 2D thing, it's kind of similar to what you want here, and I worked on this thing. I sent it to him, and keep in mind, you know, we're in Dallas, this guy's in Nashville, mm-hmm. and, and you and I had done this video for somebody here, mm-hmm. and then he takes it to the board, and he shows them the sample, and they said, uh, we already saw this, You're, you already showed this to us, he's like, no... I did not show you this. They're like, we saw this video. When did we see this video? They start talking to each other. They're like, we saw this video yesterday. Somebody else pitched us this exact same video yesterday. That's Yeah, yeah. this story is hilarious. It's like, what? And so it, it turns out the guy that we were contracted through to do the deal, and not even contract because we're a business, mm-hmm. but the guy who hired us to do that, you know, I mean, we it contractually had full full right to use that video in any way we wanted, but he presented it and said, this is what I can do, mm-hmm. which, yes, he can do that because yeah. he's a producer and he mm-hmm. hired us to do it, but we had both shown it to them, you know, mm-hmm. and it, that's just an example. Here we are in Dallas and the industry is small as it is mm-hmm. in Dallas, and then you figure, wow, you add Nashville to the equation, it's still small because this producer is... Uh, what 800 miles away from here yeah 
showing the same thing to somebody else and pitching it as the same deal. And so you never know how that's going to come back around. Feels real good for us because we're the one getting the work no matter what. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's true. Because to them, their interpretation of it was, well, this guy just is more of a middleman mm-hmm. because he just hires the people that we're going to hire anyway. Mm-hmm. So it worked out, you know, for the best in that situation. But uh, Dallas especially is really small as far as the market. I feel like I know a majority of all the animators probably in DFW. Yeah. We need um, to get together a C40 group. Just yes. like a get together. And I didn't realize ABC already been chewed is in Dallas. Yeah, I didn't know that either. They're in Allen, aren't they? I, I did not know that and I've seen the work it's, before. It's, it's so funny because we were we were at NAB watching some of their stuff watching the guys present you know the skateboarding yeah. thing yeah the skateboard that's, deal that's so crazy yeah that like you know we're literally just miles away from them i grew up in allen <laughs> and there's not a lot of animators in dallas there really aren't yeah and so i i figured we knew most everybody <laughs> yeah you know uh, i mean i i've looked for contractors many times trying to find somebody that can do you know, extra work when we have overflow and it's, it's really hard to find people that are decent. Yeah. There's a lot of people that, who are trying to make it that are not that great that I find. But it, when you, it's really hard to find like a really super good reel that's in Dallas and be like, Oh, I got to get in contact with that guy. Yeah. So I was very surprised. And maybe it's because they're a business, you know, technically not a contractor. Yeah, probably. But, um, no, no. Yeah, don't burn bridges. Yeah, don't. So, have any challenges this week? Um, yeah, I mean, not to get too far into it, because it'd probably be better to talk about it when I'm done, <laughs> and I have more to talk about, but I'm building an entire subdivision in Octane right now. Oh, that's fun. Oh, yeah, and you've been using Carbon Scatter. Yeah, I've been using Carbon Scatter, man, and and I like it, but it's a little crashy. Yeah, especially with Octane. You know, I, it wasn't. It wasn't. I don't think it was specifically made for Octane. You know, because when you when you move your cursor or whatever, you move your scene. It, you know, all your instances disappear. They show up whenever you render, but mm-hmm. yeah, it's it's a little weird. Yeah, it is kind of crashy too. But they advertise it as such, and their demo video shows them using it with Octane. So, Oh, really? Yeah. No, I didn't see the demo video. That's uh-huh. funny. It says works with Octane and V-Ray. Hmm. Interesting. That is so, interesting. So, yeah, here, here's Probably what I like. Probably because Octane and V-Ray both, tra- you know, they can convert C40 mm-hmm. materials over. That's probably what they're doing. Right. It's, um, it's the most compatible. I know that they're, what's the cloud software? Ozone doesn't work well with it because it doesn't convert correctly yeah here's what i like about it i like the instancing Mm -hmm. i like being able to paint Mm -hmm. i do not like that even if you're painting on like a simple plane Mm -hmm. if there's a bunch of other geometry in the scene it kind of freaks out and doesn't work well yeah i don't like that there's a million menus and you can only use one at a time like you if you open like the three menus it's kind of like the top one has to be closed before you can click the other one yeah i'm trying to think um yeah 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 yeah. i know what you're saying i do like that you can set up those environments Mm -hmm. or whatever they're called or ecosystems Mm -hmm. so you have like a section over here is going to have pine trees and it's going to have these little flowers on the bottom and a little bit of grass. Mm-hmm. And you set that kind of deal up to then you set it to the side and then you want to come back and do that like symmetrically on the other side. Then you apply it to that geometry. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Yeah. I really, I really love the painting, you know, the painting and that is done by with instancing and stuff, you know, and that you can set, you know, you can select five different things that you want it to just randomly put throughout there you know as you're painting it on or you can just do one at a time i mm-hmm. thought that was pretty cool it's pretty cool it, it's yeah. the thing that crashes all the time is the actual you know data lib the the library file uh-huh that's what crashes on me all the time hmm. do you get that i don't know i only had i've only used it for one project but i did like it you know but oh, okay. i did know it was it was it was pretty crashy I think what I'll probably do is build my entire scene that I'm working on mm-hmm. 
And then in the end, I'll do some sort of simplified version of the scene that's kind of blocked out. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll kind of do like an X-Ref type thing where I can turn off the Mm X-Ref and I have my little area and I'll paint it all on and then I can turn the X-Ref back on. That's cool. That's a good idea. My my main problem is there's a couple carbon scatter f- scenes that I've saved, and they haven't saved correctly. Really? And I go to open up the file, and it's, it gives you that error that says, um, like, cor- not it doesn't say corrupt, but I said not cannot read this file because it's not the right type of file or. Weird. The, I've never the, gotten that before. Yeah, the looming terrible terrible error you never want to see in cinema because it means you're probably screwed yeah so my thought on that whole thing is it save the carbon scatter stuff for the end and do it as a separate file oh man i remember something okay actually speaking of that when i was using carbon scatter like at first there was uh <laughs> so i built this entire scene i had spent like a whole day building an entire scene and then started using carbon scatter blah 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 and then so the next day i came in and um it was still open Uh, and then I was going to save it and it crashed in the middle of my save Mm. and I hadn't done like a, you know, save incremental. So like I have auto save on and I didn't have auto save on. I go back to that and it is gone. And so I go back to a previous version and it was like a completely different scene. And so I, I, I freaked out, you know, I was sweating bullets when that happened. And then luckily, uh, my work has a backup system every night nice yeah so they were able to go back and get it that's another reason i like doing my projects on dropbox Mm -hmm. because i have the paid version and you can actually go back and say hey i want this version when i saved the last time so even if you saved over the file and that one got corrupted Mm -hmm. you can get back the version from like an hour before interesting i didn't know that yeah, you go to the web interface mm-hmm. and you right click on the file and you say view versions. Oh, that's and you cool. You can see all the versions of it. Huh. So I may have to and do that, that. That works back for I think thirty days, and then if you have the pro account, which is way too expensive, yeah, um, you can go back unlimited, and you can do unlimited data restore and everything on that. But it's way too expensive. That's cool. Hey, can we take a fiver? You want to take a fiver? Yeah, sorry, my stomach's kind of hurting. You, gotta, you <laughs> drank caffeine again, didn't you? No, I didn't. I did not. What are you talking about? We're talking about carbon scatter. We were talking about carbon scatter. Oh, we kind of finished that up. Here, yeah. Okay, so here's the thing. I, I've got uh, another thing I want to talk about in the non-technical category. Okay. Well, which, as far as problems for the week, have you got... Mm. Uh, are, I, I got a big problem for the week that I oh, love to oh, talk about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Okay. Go ahead, caller. <laughs> so, uh, this week, um, I ran into the problem. I had to, I was modeling a, it's like an ignition switch type thing or like a cover for an ignition switch for a car for like okay. Lexus, you know? And I had to, so I went through and I modeled the whole thing. It took me a couple hours because it was pretty intricate. Is this a push button? Uh, no, no. It's like, Key. it's like the ring, the ring that goes around the key where the key gets inserted. I don't know. It's weird. Okay. So, um, I get it all done and modeled and then I go tell my guy it's done. He's like, oh yeah, we need an IGS file. Have you ever messed with IGS files? That sounds familiar. What like program the, is the that? Step files, you know? So. A SolidWorks, isn't it? Solid, it's it SolidWorks, I believe. Yes. Okay. So, um, I had to figure out a way in order to convert it over to an IGS file uh, uh, and uh, basically mm. spent the entire day trying to figure it out because IGS files and I believe step files are the same. They are, uh, it, it, so working with polygons and working with NURBS, you know, polygons is just like, it's kind of like vector and versus pixels or, uh, raster, you know? So, yes. uh, polygons is your raster and NURBS is your vector. So, uh, uh, basically the IGS files are vector files. So I was working entirely in polygons. So I had to figure out a way uh. to first convert the polygons over to NURBS and then I could save the NURBS or find, then find a way in order to convert the NURB file into a IGS file. So, wow. Oh my gosh. It was awful. So 
I tried 3DS Max. 3DS Max wouldn't do it. I tried Maya. Maya wouldn't do it. I downloaded AutoCAD, like a trial of AutoCAD to oh, see if I could get before. that to work. And I couldn't even figure out AutoCAD. Isn't there something called Rhino? Or, that, or, oh, I'm getting there. Okay, and so good, finally, good. Rhino. Okay. So I imported it to Rhino. Uh-huh. And, um, uh, and I was able to do, it was like a convert to NURBS or something like that. Yeah. And so basically all it did was converted every single square of polygon into a square <laughs> NURB. Yeah. Uh-huh. So I had like 75,000 NURBS. Jeez. <laughs> it was awful. So like, but I, I finally got it, you know, and I will say I messed around with Rhino, you know, I downloaded a trial to try it out and mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't, I didn't hate it. I didn't hate it. Yeah. You know, if you're having, it's, it seems, it looks very simple. Like it's not as flashy, like the, the UI really like is as, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, it looks, it looks like a really dumbed down version. And what's the weirdest thing to me is whenever you're doing like, effects or like rotations or something it's like you don't you don't click on a button and rotate it or click on a button and do the effect or the deformer or whatever you type it in Hmm? you like actually have to type it into this command prompt i mean i don't know if you can actually if there is buttons for everything but from all the tutorials that i saw online you're typing this stuff in so i mean which is okay i guess but it, it it was if you know all the things, but trying to figure out the things was the hardest part about it, you know? Well, can I, can I ask what's the context of what you were building? Like, was it for somebody who was going to... So, here's the thing. Like, initially, when it was brought to me, they said, okay, they're going to be doing this for distribution, and they're going to be building models based off of what you make. And I said, whoa. I am not an AutoCAD guy. Exactly. I don't feel comfortable doing that. You know, if you're building this for reproduction, I don't even know if this thing will insert into the thing that you're wanting. You know? Yeah, it's got to be like perfect spec. Exactly. If you do that. And they're like, oh, yeah, just use some calipers. And I'm like, I'm not using calipers to do this. <laughs> you know, I use a ruler, I get down to millimeters maybe, you know? Yeah. Ugh. So, and I was, I was doing, I was using, I w- did it in centimeters and millimeters millimeters and stuff because that was so much easier than doing one sixteenth of a oh, inch. Yeah, of don't course. get me on freaking you know the the metric system versus our system <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, besides the good system yeah right <clears throat> um yeah. so so yeah and uh but then they finally came back they said oh yeah we're not using it for distribution but we still need an igs file i'm like okay <laughs> So, I used mm. Rhino. Um, one thing I really liked about Rhino was that it came with some stock environments, and it was really easy to just drag and drop environments into one thing or the other, and it came with, like, oh, uh, so I was creating another logo. I was creating, like, a Lexus logo as well. Um, I'll tell you, that thing was a beast. That was such a beast to do because it, like, it all... Anyway... So I had to convert that one over to NURBS as well, and um, but they needed materials that went along with that. So I had to figure out how to, you know, put materials on it in uh, in Rhino, and it was surprisingly easy because you know mm. it's just a chrome material, and they've right. got these stock materials that they put in there, which is pretty sweet. So anyway, I I messed around with Rhino, man, and I liked it. Yeah, you never want to design anything in cinema like that. No, no, it's not what it's for, and people don't understand. There's a difference between people who design like real life products and seriously like autocad autocad and uh, programs like rhino and stuff i mean that's a, it's a whole different element you know like mm-hmm. i mean i guess if you if you're figuring out if you know how to work in nerbs like completely i mean it wouldn't be that big of a deal you know but man that's, yeah but it's cinema doesn't beast. really do that i mean uh, yeah i mean max does yeah you can yeah. start with the uh, primitive and max and do all this crazy stuff to it, and it's it it's no, it's non destructive. Yeah. yeah, which I really like about Max. Yeah, mm-hmm. I don't know why Cinema doesn't do that because it seems like it would be easy to do. I know because like basically, I mean, when you're converting to editable, it seems to me like you should just be able to throw a deformer on there, like a convert to editable like effect or deformer or something like that, you know, which might make it easier. Right. Instead or, of, and, and then you just turn it off and you go back to your square. You know. You want to be able to select polys on a primitive. Yeah. And you but can't s- do that. 
I, I so. know, but like it seems to me like instead of converting to edible, you should just be able to throw a convert to edible tag or something on there. Oh, yeah, yeah, you know? exactly. And then exactly. you turn it off, and then everything that all the effects or whatever that went below it that don't convert well with the whatever, I don't know. Yeah, that's exactly what it is. You th- In 3D Max, you throw in all the modifiers, mm-hmm. and all the modifiers work on top of that primitive. Yeah, it's. it's I don't know. It it seems like a simple, easy thing to incorporate. I don't know. The only real engineering, like modification type things I've seen, like for real world use in Cinema 4D, I've seen is for 3D printing. I've seen people have done that, but still, that's more of an art. Mm -hmm. There's there's a lot of things I guess that you could do with it where you do have to get accurate, and you could get accurate, but. I always tell people, even in the subdivision that I'm doing, I, I'm using real schematics. I'm using Dem Earth, and I'm using mm-hmm. Google Earth. And how do you like Dem Earth? And, uh, I like Dem Earth. Yeah, Dem Earth, though. Dem Earth is good. But I'm I'm putting these maps on top of it. That's like hand drawn maps, and then on top of that, I'm putting site surveys to kind of build this thing. But again, it's still a reference. It's not like they're going to be able to take my file and use it to do the real yeah. deal. Like yeah. the, the topography is not going to be that accurate. It's, you know, it's art. It's art as opposed to engineering. Yeah. People don't totally. understand that sometimes. Yeah. 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 It's like, Oh, you could do architectural stuff. You're yeah. a 3d yeah, guy. You're uh, a 3d guy. But I don't Ooh. know how the, what, how to calculate, load bearing and all that kind of stuff it's just purely art yeah 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 anyway so any- oh uh, yeah do you have something else on that no or? no i was just gonna say do you have any more problems but anyway rhino was pretty cool i i may get more into it you know just another w- another program to learn yep <laughs> yep this is what i was going to talk to you about i thought of this because somebody was asking about our influences last week oh really or last time and we we talked about our influences but in oh, the yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, sense yeah. of designers i think a good topic would be our non-designer influences okay non-designer influences man you should let me study for this so <laughs> just throwing it out there for me well okay i'll say one that you and i both have mm-hmm. um gary v yeah gary v i love gary v love some he, gary v he is he's one of the nicest i i got to meet gary v um, Gary Vaynerchuk, in case you guys don't know, mm-hmm. um, he he's kind of a motivational speaker, Web 2.0 kind of guy. You know, uh, wants to own the Jets one day. But man, he he's such at least he's he really gets you. He just like gets you going and like really he's just influential. Makes you want to go out there and just like take over the world. You know, mm-hmm. and it's so funny because I went to go see him speak. It was right after he released one of his books. It was the uh, uh, what was it? The thank you economy right after he released that mm. and um so that was, he was after doing, crush it right yeah it was like crush it then the thank you economy and then i think his newest one is like jab 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 left hook or something like that hmm. so uh the the uh, i was seeing him speak you know and they're giving out free books and stuff and i saw him down at the bottom talking to people and i, just, I, I was like all right i'm gonna go up and say hi i went up he's like a foot shorter than me you know and oh yeah he's short he's super short and he's just like He's just got so much energy and he's just so positive, you know, and I, I waited around in line to, to get it signed. I was like one of the last people to get it signed, my book signed. And I told him, I said, dude, you got me through one of the hardest times in my professional career because I had to do 150 hours of rotoscoping. It was awful. It was awful. 150 oh. hours of like point by point rotoscoping uh, using the pen tool in After Effects. Like literally, oh I would spend gosh. an entire day on uh, a, a second or two, you know. Oh, so, yeah. gosh! Why? <laughs> why did you have to do because that? Because it was it was the early days of me learning After Effects and stuff like that. I would go about it all different ways now, but. <sighs> So anyway, and I told him, I was like, dude, you got me through some of the hardest times. All I did was put on your stuff and just listen to it while I was doing this rotoscoping. And it just got, it kept me pumped the whole time. You know, Gary Vee is great. He is so great. He is. And I don't listen to him enough 
You know, I, I was a, a big fan for a while back in the early days of Web 2.0, social media, mm-hmm. you know, life hacks, blah, blah, blah. And uh, he did Crush It, and I read Crush It, which is a short book. And I got into some other people after that. I think that's kind of why I fell off on him. But I started following him recently on Facebook, and I watched some of his daily videos. Mm-hmm. And, yeah, they are they are great. They're really good. Yeah, talking about the what is it the the black posts or Facebook dark posts? Dark posts. <laughs> it's all the rage of the kids. Right, right, yeah. right. That and uh, uh, Netflix and chill. That's big with the kids. Netflix and chill. <laughs> yeah. Uh, other. I design... just heard about that this week. Netflix you did really? Yeah, that's the first time oh. I heard it. Dude, I wow. haven't been in the dating scene in a really long time. Uh, so. The kids, the kids, the kids these days. Yeah, my daughter started singing the 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 Whip It and Nene song <laughs> this weekend. I was like, "Where did you even learn that?" <laughs> That's funny. So, other design or non-design influences would be for me my absolute biggest influence in so many different areas would be merlin man yeah i knew you were gonna say merlin man yeah man i'm telling you and it's because he has been in he's been involved in so many ways in different podcasts that i've listened to over the years yeah and back in the day he did his own and i kind of i kind of fell onto his podcast somehow at some point after he was already done doing it and then it was really the podcast Back to Work, which has a huge following, yeah. which is so great. And there's something about that show that is not only inspirational to me, but it seems like every time something is going on in my life in any way, if it's a business thing, if it's a personal thing, if it's something I've been thinking about for a while, he just happens to touch on that. And yeah. I don't care how big or small it is. Sometimes it's something that's a real issue that I'm trying to work on. Sometimes it's just something as small as... Uh, trying to get this stupid garage cleaned because mm-hmm. when it first became a, my garage first became the problem that it is i was just like overwhelming and i'm like how am i going to get this back to how it was and he starts talking about oh let's say for example you want to clean your garage here's how you go about doing it <laughs> you know i mean it's just it's but it's not that it's he's he's witty he's funny like the kind of humor that i absolutely love you know like i, I agree with you Mm-hmm. But I sometimes feel like he is way too smart for me. Like, <laughs> I, I feel like I, sometimes when I listen to him, I feel like I'm just a simpleton who doesn't understand a lot of his. Because I listen to, you know, Roderick on the line mm-hmm. occasionally. And he, him and him and John Roderick have this, oh, like, banter a, back and forth. Yeah. And I feel like I'm just, like, so dumb. Good. What I'm a sucked. great show. Yeah. That's a great show, too. <laughs> yeah. It's a good show. I just That's feel like I'm so dumb. Like, I don't understand all these, like you know historical references that are whatever that they're making like uh, I historical underst- pop yeah. culture references or something i don't know i understand a lot of them not all of them like there's a lot of um i guess world war Two stuff that i some of it i i know and some of it i don't but a lot of that comes from roderick mm-hmm. when you're listening to back to work it's more on the technical side yeah, yeah, yeah. and he he's funny he's inspirational when he gets, it's really funny because he'll just go off and talk about things that really don't matter, but they're still relevant. You know, like he'll talk about Adventure Time or something, mm-hmm. like a lot. And they'll talk, I mean, Lemon Grab and, you know, just stupid stuff or comic books or whatever. But then come back and somehow he brings it back around and says this crazy, crazy, awesome, inspirational thing at the end. And it's, it's something else. If you don't listen to it, you definitely should. Uh, but in the tech world, the wittiness, the funniness, the he did the uh, "You Look Nice Today" podcast. He's doing mm-hmm. the Dalrymple Report now, which is uh, pretty good. I haven't caught up on it. And then he's doing the other one, uh, "Reconcilable Differences." He's doing a lot of podcasts. Yeah, but I've listened to just like thousands of hours of Merlin Man. Yeah, he's pretty good. Who else? Good. Who else do you listen to, or or read or follow? Or I don't really listen to anybody. I mean, I don't read enough books. There's not enough time in the day. Mm. You know, I mean, between work and you know, 
Brograph and having a kid and a wife and, you know, being tired all the time because I'm going three weeks straight on no caffeine or aspartame, you know, <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, trying if, to work out. If you're trying to be inspired, not for graphics reasons, but uh-huh. maybe for business reasons or motivational reasons, is there anybody know. else, even in the past? You know, sometimes I've, I've listened to Dave Ramsey, you know. I know a lot of mm-hmm. people don't, you know, do like him or don't like him. You yeah. know, sometimes if I need some financial motivation or whatever, I'll listen to him. Yeah. Other than that, not really anybody. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I read a lot, you know, like I'll read, I'll read the tech blogs and stuff like that and stay up to date. But other than that, I don't, I don't you know me, I don't listen to a lot of podcasts. I listen to my brother and my brother and me. Yeah, I do too. I love that. <laughs> it makes and me laugh. There are a lot of things like that that I listen to, but they're not necessarily inspirational. You know? Yeah, it's, and they're and they're they're it, what Adventure Zone or whatever. And it's just three, yeah. four guys sitting around playing D and D. I mean, that's funny yeah. to me. I like that. And there's other people that I enjoy and that I really look up to too. You know, Steve Gibson, mm-hmm. and he's incredible as far as networking and security. And uh, I've fallen off just because I'm behind, but you know he's he's super super intelligent and he's taught me so much i wouldn't exactly call him an influence like as far as inspiration goes because i don't get inspired by him i just learn from him yeah apparently the cowboys just won in the last 10 seconds (sighs) i'm sure they didn't deserve it (laughs) hashtag irrelevant (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> we're from dallas folks mm-hmm. if you didn't know yeah, and, fo- football, uh, the football gene is strong here it is but man if anybody could care less yeah <laughs> i don't know uh, anyway yeah, i, I never start a whole ball. podcast on the, the cowboys yeah i'm not the type of person to watch ball go far <laughs> <laughs> go local you. sports team i got way too much to do to spend 40 hours a week did you know that it, there is some number like the average man male person watches 40 hours of sports a week or something like that I am definitely that not true? the average man. Is that true? Is that number true? We're going to have I, to look that up. I, I don't know. I mean, it, it, with fantasy football, I guess, <sighs> you know? And we started. Fantasy football and regular football. I mean, you, you think about it, you're probably spending a whole day. 40 hours, no. That seems ridiculous. It upsets me. Sports <laughs> upsets me. And you know what? I go see the Mavs game or two from now and then. I, mm-hmm. I will go to a baseball game. So I guess we're doing a whole podcast about sports. <laughs> Man. It just <laughs> I like the, I like I like baseball. Baseball's good. This is a Merlin Man thing too. Mm-hmm. He feels exactly the same way I do about it. About sports? Like he almost gets upset about how much people like sports and will argue about sports and it's so <laughs> irrelevant. It's such a to me, I don't have enough hours in the day as it is. I don't know how you could spend that much time watching sports. Yeah. And a lot of people are gonna be upset at me for saying that. But you know what? <laughs> if if you're trying if you're wondering why your business why you're not able to get your business off the ground and you're watching you're a lot of sports. Do, right. You're trying to do something on the side outside of work and you're watching a bunch of sports, there's your problem. Yeah. Sorry, but that's what it is. And even Gary Vaynerchuk says that. He says, stop watching effing Lost. Yeah. Which was a (laughs) very old reference now. Well, it is now. (laughs) But that's one of his most famous speeches, the Web Expo 2.0 speech that he did about that. About stop doing this BS, watching Netflix and chill at night (laughs) thing. Stop doing it. Like if If you're frustrated and you don't think you have enough time you have enough time yeah Mm -hmm. yeah schedule the time schedule Schedule the time time for yourself if you really like it that much you're just gonna do it yeah you're really big into scheduling though like well not even scheduling if you really what is is the app that you use all the time to uh keep you omni focus omni focus yeah yes and this is a book that i read a long time ago uh audiobook actually it's by um David Allen, is mm-hmm. that right? David Allen. I have no idea. And this is based on that methodology of of working, the where you, the where you take things out of your brain and put it into an inbox the moment that you think of it, and you you and it's out of your brain because the way your brain works, it's an an infinite loop. If you think, oh, I have to do that thing, then your brain is constantly thinking, I have to do that thing, I have to do that thing, I have to do that thing. Was it? I got to do that thing. 
Mm-hmm. Show me the show me the blueprints. Show me the blu- <laughs> show me the blueprints. And it and it and if you write it down, you put it in that inbox. It is out of your brain. You can rest easy knowing that at some point you're going to come back to that later in the day or the next morning, and you're going to categorize that where it needs to go. And you're going to figure out: Am I supposed to do something with that, or am I not supposed to do something with that? And then you're good to go. Right? Yeah. yeah. So no, OmniFocus. I totally agree. That's what OmniFocus is. And it's, it is great. And I would not be able to do the things that I did in a day without OmniFocus. And this is something that Merlin Mann also picked up. And what he was saying about that and how he related it to getting the things done that you want to get done is uh, you're going to have to pardon my French here for a second. Okay? Oh, boy. So everybody stand I'm gonna, by. I'm going to shut my okay. virgin ears. Here it comes. He says, you don't have to schedule time to masturbate. <laughs> Earmuffs. Did you hear me? Yes. Okay. <laughs> now, here's the thing. Yeah, it's it's a vulgar reference, but it is, as vulgar as that was, it's profound. Because mm-hmm. think about that. Just think about that for a second. So, if you love what you do, you're not going to pencil it in. You're just going to do it. Yeah. So, maybe if you are finding yourself watching sports every night, for 40 hours a week instead of getting that business running maybe that's not what you want to do yeah maybe you want to be a professional sports player totally makes sense now if you're a merlin man follower i'm just rehashing but i'm channeling my inner merlin and i'm telling you that he is one of my biggest non-design influencers so if if that's something that sounds interesting to you you got to check out what he does and you got to check out OmniFocus. word i'll back you up on that all right, what else do I have here? Any projects you've been working on this week? Like, any fun things? Mm, not really, man. I've been trying to work on BroGraph in my spare time. Yeah. new The new website's coming along. It's coming looking along. nice. It's looking really, really nice. He showed me a, uh, a mock-up of the, the, the main page. Man, I really like it. Did you see the new? Yeah, the one uh, with our pictures on it. With our pictures? Yeah, yeah dude. It's coming along. It's coming along. Yeah. I look I good in that picture. Oh, the, like, f- the football? Yeah, yeah. I Holden. was like, you know, yeah. in one of my lower weights. <laughs> <laughs> so. Yeah, I think my picture is very much my lower weight, too. Yeah. Got to work on that a little bit. Yeah. I've been uh, I've been building this room scene in V-Ray, you know. I think it's, uh, there's, a, there's quite a few things that I think may eventually turn into tutorials, you know, building a room scene. Because there's, like, so many simple things you would think would be easy to do like building curtains you know mm-hmm. how would you build curtains well you would think that you would just make a plane and then turn it into cloth but how do you get those wrinkles well i found a, a method online where it's basically you just you know take the bezier pen tool you know and just draw a bunch of like squiggly lines or whatever like it would be how the curtain lays out and then just duplicate it move it down and loft between the two there's your curtains hmm they look good too they look like real curtains what's cool is like you can create the rings for the curtains you know mm-hmm. like evenly spaced do a cloner or something like that and then as you're drawing the bezier curves or whatever you can draw them through the loops you know so that you don't have to worry about lining anything up right it's pretty cool hmm. so anyway it, it matches the carpet <laughs> yeah, carpet matches the drapes yeah <laughs> dang it i need a bell <laughs> do i have one I'm sure you do. I have one around here somewhere. I don't know. Just oh. put it in post. Yeah. No, wait. Let me see. We'll Hold fix on. it in post. Hold on. Hold on. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. No. Silence on a podcast. No. That's not a good thing. What? Huh? I said silence on a podcast. It's not a good thing. Oh, Everyone what? just turned off their radios. Yeah. I'm sure they did. Radios. So, here's another topic for you. Oh, oh yeah. By the- oh, no. Hold on. So, building the room scene. There's uh-huh. also, like... Oh, yeah. So, one of the coolest things that I found... Like, if I'm looking for, like, crown molding or, like, baseboards or something like that, dude, if you search for, like, baseboards or crown molding uh, DWG files, they're all over the place. Oh, like, really? Like, so many, like, places. It's like free ones? Free. Well, it, it's, it's funny. It's like these companies that are actually selling the baseboards and the crown moldings will give out their DWG oh, files for free. okay. Nice. You know, in case you're using them in, like, an yeah. AutoCAD, you know, layout or something like that. So, you go to one of these sites... 
you find the DWG, you take the DWG and bring it into your project. And that's basically your, you know, your path in order to extrude it into, you that know, perfect. crown moldings. It's awesome. And it saves you so much time. And you can basically just go through and click whichever ones you want. That's along the, cool. same si- the same lines of the IES files that you can find for people who sell different types of lights. Yeah, totally. Totally. Yeah, hmm. that's such a cool idea. So, oh, nice. and then like, so I built this couch, you know, I was looking for modern furniture and I was going to build this couch, you know, something that we may eventually sell in like a furniture pack or something. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I was like, well, how am I going to, I need to, I need to, I, I, I want a chair along with this and like a love seat. And I figured, you know, okay, this is great. So I build my three, three cushion couch and then just knock off two cushions and move a bunch of the, uh, the points inward, you know, and there's my chair, you know, and same with the love seat. You know, you're basically just moving a bunch of points in order to create your couch and your, you know, Mm -hmm. love seat and your single chair. It's pretty cool. Hmm. Quick way to do that. Anyway. I need to go check all of this out. Yeah, you do. It's all in V-Ray, though. So, you'll have to do it in Octane. Yeah. Word. And did we talk about new graph, speaking of... I don't think we did. So, did you... I don't think we did either. Did you, I mean, we, I use it for, I hate it. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I don't use it that much. I basically use it to convert from, uh, step files or IGS files into cinema 4d, you know, cause it's kind of cool that you can, you can import them and then export them straight out as a dot C 40 file, mm-hmm. which is really cool. I mean, that's, that's really cool. And apparently you can build something in cinema 4d and then export it out to whatever file format you need through new graph like yeah, it's, it's got an actual crazy. export but i i couldn't get it to work for me the other day because it gave you the option for igs but it wasn't a real igs file is that because of the primitive problem i i think so i think so because it would export to an igs but it would not come in like because then i would bring it into new graph and then try and export it again as an igs just to see you know or bring it in, no i would take that igs file open it up and then bring it into rhino and try and export it out and it would say there are no nerb files with this you know it's like i i don't understand mm. why new graph would export out a igs file but rhino will tell me that it's not an actual IGS. I don't know. It was weird. Hmm. Well, we used it uh, last last week, I guess, to yeah. do, to a, do project. a project. And um, I, You're just it, converting so, step files. Yeah, you know? but is it is it just me? Or is it coincidence that we've both had to do this a lot lately? Or... Is it like a trend? Like, it, are, are a lot of people like I don't, in I don't similar industries starting to use like SolidWorks more? Like, what is the I, what is the reason I don't this know. seems to be coming up? A I lot? don't know. I mean, you know, I with my job in particular, I don't do a lot of you know, I don't do a lot of animation per se anymore. You mm-hmm. know, I mine are mostly just still frames and stuff like that, and I'm building models because we got to do 3D models, but you know your job i i think that's just a i don't i i think it's just the industry that just so happens to be around us at the moment Mm. you know it's a completely different industry you know it's not animation or something like that it's manufacturing yeah Uh, it's a whole nother world hmm so but new graph i mean it's a it's a pretty cool program it's I, i think it's really expensive but you know I don't know the exact price on it. So, uh, yeah, I can't remember what it was. Uh, well, it's because there's modules. Mm-hmm. It's because there's modules that that go with it. Once you get it, like you, if you want to be able to convert this or that, you have to have this other kind of module. I forget what it is. Like, I don't remember if it's a to or from thing. Which one you buy? I remember. I remember that like you get the base and then. In order to convert from step to cinema, I think you have to get the certain plugin piece yeah, of it. And it ends yeah, up being I think like the, the bucks. step file by itself is, or to the step exporter by itself is another cost, which yeah. kind of sucks. So, okay, the last thing that I have on my list, I was going to 
address because this is the hard one. This is the hard one everybody has, right? Mm-hmm. What should I charge? Okay. What do you think? Thousand dollars an hour. <laughs> oh. I mean, Be- because here's it's what a, you know. Here, it, it it depends. I mean, you know, there are certain there are certain post production houses. You know, when they're charging for three work, they can charge anywhere from one hundred and twenty five to two hundred fifty dollars an hour. Mm-hmm. You know. Okay, so say you want, you know, you are the one who's actually doing the work, so cut that bill in half, you know, or you're new, you know, charge a little bit less. When I was new and started out in the, the industry, you know, I was I was charging $15 an hour, <laughs> which is Whoa. like nothing, you know. I was $15 an hour not to do any 3D work. It was just to, you know, do some basic editing and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, eventually my price grew quite a bit. Right. Quite a bit. You know, I don't well, see, I, I had a guy I was working with a while back and we were talking about, well, what do you charge for? It's such doing... a sensitive subject, you know, asking yeah. someone what they charge. You know, I, I think that the standard that I've found, at least with video editing, is like around anywhere from 65 to $75 an hour. Mm-hmm. And that's for, you know, basic, uh, the, that's for the for your just basic editing and after effects stuff, you know, I don't know about 3d animation, but my thing is I, I don't charge differently based on what they're wanting. I charge the same price, whether it's 3d animation, simple editing or after effects. It's just going to be hourly. Correct. You know, this is my hourly hour, uh, hourly rate, but you know, that's, it's all different for different people. You know, if you're able to knock something out and much quicker using a different program, like say you're using, uh, uh, you know Cinema 40, and you know uh, uh, what's what's uh, Video Copilot's one 3D the, oh. their 3D program Element Element 3D Element, yeah. yeah say you know you're quicker at doing it in Element 3D but you want to charge less and you're okay with charging less for you know I don't know After Effects versus Cinema 4D do that that's yeah. fine you know yeah that's it's the all thing. up to it's all up to how much you think you can actually I mean, really get away much, with yeah exactly yeah. you know like and you have to you have to know kind of your own self-worth you know when i when i got uh laid off from that job that dave and i worked at you know i i was actually i was charging very little for my services uh for freelance work and i i moved immediately into freelance work um, and so then, uh, as I was working with all these other freelancers, I come to find out that they're charging twice what I am, you know, mm-hmm. which I mean, I'm still getting a bunch of work. I was still getting full-time work and I was still getting paid more than I was making, you know, at the previous job. But then I, I realized that my worth for what I'm doing and the quality of my peers that I were working with, I, I don't want to like say that I'm better than them or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. but my quality was just as good, if not a little bit better. And my skill set, I knew a lot more. So I brought more to the table, you right. know, so I, I was perfectly comfortable with changing my rate from what i was charging to what the average of my peer set was you know Mm -hmm. i don't know i mean you really have to you really have to see how well you can get it done how fast you are you know and how uh uh how comfortable you are with the, the 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 stuff and i don't know what do you think what are your thoughts well my my thought is this when you first start out you don't know how bad or good you are Right. So I look back on my stuff when I wasn't doing much 3D work and I can't stand to look at it. Right. right? Yeah. And I look at my 3D stuff from when I was first starting out thinking, oh man, this is great. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, this that's terrible. Yeah. That's, that's absolutely horrible. And of course, if you can't look back on your stuff and think it looks terrible, then you're not improving. Yeah. So I think you do reach a point though. And this applies in two ways to graphics. You reach a point where, A, you realize that you're pretty good at being able to do just about anything asks you to anything that anybody will ask you to do. Mm-hmm. 
and with with maybe some exceptions. If somebody asks me to do character animation, I'm just going to have to pass it on to somebody else or yeah, work with here. them or something, right? Because I know that that I just shouldn't even bother doing that. Mm-hmm. Because I could spend maybe 5 years trying to get good at it and then I'll get like one client that wants it. It's not worth it for me. Yeah. But for the most part, if someone asks me to do something technical and I don't know how to do it, chances are I know that I could figure out how to do it. Yeah. And there's a point when you're just getting started where you wouldn't be able to know. Like, you, you kind of get to this zen point, right? Where you're like, I know I could probably figure that out. Yeah, 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 yeah. As opposed to thinking, oh, man, that sounds ridiculous. And now I'm scared because I told him yes and I don't know how to do it. Yeah. You know, that's funny because that that was the way – that's the way I was when I was first early modeling. You know, when, uh, remember when the, the – the, uh, Brograph live that we did when I said that I I, I love projects that scare me. Mm-hmm. You know, I have found that there are fewer and fewer projects that actually scare me anymore, yeah. which is really nice. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, I I I've seen that the quality of my work has gone up significantly, especially since working with Octane and V-Ray. <laughs> What's well, like the subdivision thing I'm working on right now? Mm-hmm. There's nothing inside of me that says I can't do this. Right, but how often are you actually? How many times have you ever built a subdivision or you know housing and stuff? Nothing, yeah. nothing to this scale ever. But I know enough about myself that I know I could figure out the methods that are required to make it work. Correct. And it's yeah. not necessarily a talent thing, like as far as like how good are you at three D. It's about knowing how good you are at problem solving. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's the same thing with the the curtains thing that I was talking about earlier. You know, mm-hmm. like. You know, you would think a normal way to do it. And there's so many tutorials out there that just show you how to do this in easy ways. And so what's nice is, you know, you get the project that comes along to where you can actually spend the time to learn how to do some of these newer things that you don't know. You mm-hmm. know, one, you get to bill for it, which is cool, you know. And two, you know, y- you have an entirely new skill set, you know. Yeah. And you get to do it faster. And you're getting faster at building these scenes. Like some of these room scenes that I'm building, you know, it would take me like a whole day. Now I can knock out a room scene in like, you know, a few hours or something like that, which is nice. And like with this with this scene, for example, it's more of a an issue of well, which way am I gonna go about this? Am I going to extrude all of the concrete pieces together or separately? How am I gonna do the curbs? Am I gonna do sweeps mm-hmm. for all the curbs? Or am I going to do some sort of extrude that has beveled edges? Mm-hmm. Or how am I going to go about doing it? And knowing that all you have to do is really figure out the method. And even when it comes to tutorials or something like that, I don't really do tutorials. I don't sit there and do entire tutorials anymore. Yeah, yeah it's, same here. It, you look for the tutorial that talks about how they did something. And it, this is what has made me think from time to time that Brograph needs to do something called TLDR, mm-hmm. even though it'd be like TLDW, but TLDR tutorials where... TLDR of, bro. <laughs> TLDR bro, which is a 20 second video mm-hmm. that is the same thing as one of the videos that we did in two hours. Man, that's a really good idea. So Maybe like the last <laughs> like 30 seconds of each video should be a TLDR bro. Right. <laughs> where those people who are kind of at that level uh-huh. and just are like, you know, I was thinking about building this and I don't know what if I want to do a spline thing or sweep or if I want to build this thing and do it as a loft or, a, you know, you know, whatever it is. Yeah. And you say, oh, if you want to do this thing, all you got to do is do this, this, this and this and, and then you're done. Because yeah. people that are more advanced just want to know the the bullet points, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, that's I, true. I think because I find one. myself skipping through tutorials a lot, which is so funny because I mean we're a tutorial site, <laughs> right? <laughs> so, but you know, I think that's how own. a lot of people do that. Yeah, but the other the other part of that, right, is the how good am I part? Because mm-hmm. you're never good enough. I'm never nope. good enough. You're never good enough. Like you always want to be getting better. Mm-hmm. I know that there are a lot of people I'm on par with. Mm-hmm. I know that there are, there are a lot of people that are better than I am. Yeah. I know that I'm not beginner level, mm-hmm. so that I, I know I can charge more than that. And I see what my peers are charging. I can know I can I know I can charge similar amount. Mm-hmm. That's what makes it that's what makes it hard. But don't start out being new, thinking that you could charge a ridiculous amount of money. Correct. 
Um, yeah, we I I have worked with quite a few people who don't have a great skill set mm-hmm. and are still charging that amount. Yeah, and you know if you do that it's almost as bad as burning a bridge you know Mm -hmm. you're not going to get work from that company again if they don't see the 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 skills and the you know the 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 speed and accuracy and you know how well you do if if you're not bringing that to the table they're not going to bring you back you know Mm -hmm. and i've seen that time after time with uh some of these creative services or whatever that you know hire out independent contractors and stuff you know we'll be looking for someone we'll bring them in for a day they'll do a terrible job you know even though they say they know this and this and this yes and i'm able to get done four times the amount of work that they are but they're still getting paid twice what i am you know (laughs) i don't know or they we definitely don't bring them back they can do just as good yeah they can do just as good of a job as you but it takes them twice as long therefore they get double the money how does that work correct you you should you should be able to get double the money because you did it in half the time or you know what i mean like a third two-thirds the money or something or i don't know yeah 120 percent something like that you get it done faster you get more pay right because it didn't take you <laughs> twice as long yeah i don't know and yeah, that's huh. the that's the thing that kind of happens a lot in not just with contractors but with companies too it seems like if they have a really good team they almost work so fast that they have to like not send revisions as fast. Yeah. Because then their their clients are going to know that it was something easy. Yeah. yeah They're yeah. actually holding off on sending revisions. That's funny. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. Anyway. I mean, we didn't answer the question. Nobody ever no. does. That's the yeah. problem. The best, your, your best bet is ask some of your some of your peers. It's it's kind of a you know it's it's say I'm I'm sorry to ask this and you don't have to answer it if you don't want. That's what I always start off with, mm-hmm. you know. But how much how much do you normally charge for? And you know normally with freelancers and stuff, they're okay with talking about it because that's just that's it's kind of the the nature of the beast, you know. We want to be able to, we're freelancers. We're not tied to any one company or something like that. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't know. I think, I think most people are pretty comfortable talking about it as long as they're, you know, independent contractors versus like actual employees. You don't want to do that <laughs> unless you're really good friends with them. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Dave I would, and I didn't know how much we made until like, uh-uh. you know, almost near the end. Yeah. I, yeah, I think it was, it may have actually been after you left. Yeah. 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 It might have been. Yeah. I don't know. And the thing about different rates, too, is when I was actually younger and newer to 3D, I was thinking, oh, I got to charge more for animation. I'm going to charge uh, $100 an hour, you know, or something like that, and then charge, I forget what I was charging for video at the time. Mm-hmm. And, but it was significantly less for video. Yeah. You know, editing or for the, After Effects. And the I, only know, thing that I would charge less for would probably be rendering time because I'm not having to do anything. You I know, don't even. But yeah. most of the time, I don't even charge for rendering time. Yeah. But I know a few companies out there. You know, they'll charge a lot of money for the 3D services, but the rendering time it's like a fraction of the depends. cost. It depends. If it's something simple, mm-hmm. then yeah, the rendering time doesn't even matter. Yeah. If it's something crazy elaborate, then yeah, you've got to really manage the project. Yeah. Manage the renders, then yeah. Yeah. Sometimes you you do. Sometimes the rendering is a big chore. Sometimes it's just an hour's worth of work. Yeah. But really... Then you, then you got Octane, you know? Yeah. That's like, like 10 seconds. It seems like to me when I was younger, mm-hmm. I actually thought animation, 3D animation was harder Therefore, yeah. I wanted to charge more. Yeah. But now it seems to me that there's a lot of stuff that's actually easier for me to accomplish in 3D than trying to do in 2D. Yeah. And so I'll do it that way. So really, it's just about the amount of hours spent. You have no many times. You, 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 I can't even tell you how many times I wish they had the MoGraph cloner in After Effects. Right. <laughs> oh, they have equivalents to it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there, there are some equivalents, but, you know. MoGraph cloner and randomizer in After Effects. That would be the best. Yeah. Anyway. You could, you could probably do an expression for the randomizer part. Yeah. 
Probably. But I've seen some different... Uh, some different does echo space do that thing echo i think it does but still similar. you have to play for a you have to pay for a plug-in you know well yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, i don't want to have to pay for a, 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 a really expensive plug-in so yeah. echo space is part of trap code right it's like 800 dollars yes. or something like that yeah it is yeah i ain't got that money yeah i've only used it in one situation a long time ago but i know there's stuff that does that type of thing in after effects yeah I mean, I know it's out there. It's just a plug-in. It yeah. should be. It should be standard, though. That would be cool. Come on, After Effects. Come on, Adobe. Yeah. Well, get I don't on want that. To do nulls and nesting, and they're not going to do that either. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. What else you got? Um, I don't think I have anything else. Do you? Nothing else. No. no? no. Maybe we'll play around with no new no new news on V-Ray. I wish. I'm I'm trying to get into my I can't remember my password to my V-Ray C40 forum to see if they've got anything for the uh, the beta because supposedly it's an open beta in September but I haven't seen anything on the Facebook page about it and oh. I commented on one of their pictures and they never replied to me for I the just, uh, the V-Ray 3.25 yeah with the GPU stuff yeah because I want to man I want to get my hands on it so bad somebody did a comment I think it was today or yesterday on our youtube channel about wanting us to do a comparison between octane and what was the render uh in, in the, v-ray theora Theod- the no, i think it was v-ray the, wasn't it no because we oh. did that we kind of did that yeah what's what's that renderer called i guess i, I have no that. idea it's uh yeah uh, man i don't remember i'll have to look and see hmm. i'm looking it up right now <clears throat> so Maybe we'll have to download a trial and check it out. I don't know. Is it GPU based? Do you know anything um, about it? I believe it was GPU based, and basically what I told him on it, I was like, "Well, maybe we can, but we don't have a uh, license for it." First of all, but all right. I hope I don't get sued for playing my own YouTube video here. <laughs> it's own ad. I'm trying to get to the comments on it if I can find it. So he said, uh, comments. Could you make a comparison with Octane and Thea render? What's Thea? How do you spell it? T H E A. And I looked it up and I said, we don't own it, but have you. He said he tried the demo of Thea. I'm like, well, you could try the demo of Octane and kind of put the two together and do them side by side that way. Thea Render Edition 1.5 is publicly available. But I also mentioned I haven't heard much about it, and usually it's like, yeah. if there's a renderer that you haven't heard much about, it's probably not that popular. Therefore, maybe it's not the best option. Thea Inside Cinema 4D. I mean, there four, are some 400 smaller euro. 400 Hunting. euro? Yeah. So that's a little bit cheaper than Octane, but... Yeah, it's not too bad. It would have to be a lot better to compare... I kind of feel like if there's a really good render engine out there, then I'm going to hear everybody talking about it. Yeah. I mean, that's just, you know, co- kind of common sense, but, you know, yeah, maybe this it one, is good, but this I one, it, I, it. it's got a, a live viewer as well, I think. It sounds like they all are now. There's <laughs> one that I installed not too long ago, maybe a couple months ago as a trial. It's kind of like this open source dealy, and I don't remember the name of it. Maybe that was it. Maybe. But I remember opening it up and seeing the little live thing, and it wasn't quite there, and it wasn't as good as Octane, and I kind of left it at that. Because, again, it comes back to the topic of, I don't want to learn something else. By supporting Team Render R15 only. That's Mm. weird. It's got some catching up to do then, doesn't it? Yeah, definitely. Texture baking, automatic, automated texture baking, that's good. I mean, technically, Octane supports team render if both computers have octane but yeah I mean, i've tried it before and kit that allows cool export to studio also comes bundled with our thea studio dedicated standalone application i don't know it's interesting maybe i'll try it yeah if you do then uh, hit up that dude and at least tell him what you think i guess totally yeah anyway all right cool cool just well, add it to the list of stuff that i gotta learn 
right? That's all right. I'll add it to my my uh, my resume. You know, stuff that I know. Cool. Well, um, I got quite a bit of uh, podcast posting to do here tonight, so cool. We should probably wrap this up, and uh, I got to get to work in the morning. Awesome. Well, have a good week. Um, all right, guys. Well, thanks for listening. If this is your first time listening, uh, this is our third episode. Go back and listen to the couple other ones. We really appreciate all the uh, all the uh, support that we've gotten on this podcast. It's really helped us keep going and uh we really like it i like it a lot you know because people listen to me (laughs) and i like it when people listen to me i'm really enjoying (laughs) it too and it's gotten a good reception so you know maybe we'll do it a little more often than we thought maybe Um, it depends if we can afford it (laughs) gotta see those numbers yeah we're (laughs) we're looking at uh at some some uh bandwidth stuff right now trying to figure out what our best options are but really um we thought it would be a monthly thing, and so far it's been like sometimes every week, maybe every other week. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, so maybe we'll keep it at every other week or something, or just if it's yeah. Sunday and we're both free, we do it. If we're not, we don't. You yep. Know? So so look for it. Look for it. Some Mondays. <laughs> yeah. So this is a companion to Brograph.com, Brograph mm-hmm. tutorials on YouTube. We are a Cinema 4D tutorial site. I guess Mm -hmm. we probably should have said that at the beginning. Cinema 4D, After Effects, (laughs) a little bit of Nuke. Yeah, you can just go ahead and cut this towards the beginning. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, I'll just rearrange the whole thing. Don't worry about it. I got plenty of time. Yeah. So, all right, cool. Well, uh, hope you guys have enjoyed it. If you guys have any questions, uh, hit us up. Send us an email. Mm -hmm. uh, BrographToots at uh, gmail.com. It's T-U-T-S brograph toots at gmail.com or uh, uh just hit us up on a question are, are you posting this to the youtube page I, yeah i post it everywhere okay. so you could cool. do a comment here you can go to facebook twitter mm-hmm. if you got a question pretty much there is a way to find us yeah just hit up on uh, hit us up on mm-hmm. one of the social networks and uh we'll get to the question uh we love answering some of the tutorial or some of the questions that you have um except for the one about how do you build your monster rig We've got a tutorial for that, and we've gone over it lots of times. Oh. <laughs> that's the question we get all the time. So that's so, I'll put maybe, that in the show notes. How about maybe, that? We did get good. a question if we're going to do show notes. I'm going to try. You know what? Hey, I've bit. been writing them down. I've been writing them down as we've been going through it. Okay, I've been doing it too, so you have to send okay. it to me right after the show. All right. I'm not doing extensive notes like I used to do on my other podcast because it yep. was way too time-consuming. Yeah, I know. I've got like six dots right here. Okay, cool. So, so you'll, you'll have to send them to me, and uh, I think that's all the places you can find us. I mean, unless you do AOL keyboard brograph, but that's <laughs> that's it. I don't know all if right, you've been cool. watching all my tutorials, but I've been saying that recently at the end. No, I did. I yeah. haven't. Uh-huh. I guess I haven't gotten to the end. I just been, been skipping watching. through. I I've just been skipping is. through trying to figure out the uh, right. my, my problems. Right. So, all right, guys. Well, I'm Matt Milstead. I'm Dave Koss. And this is Brograph, so uh, thanks for listening. Later, bros. Later, bros. It's pretty good, I guess. Brograph.com, an online resource for learning critical components of Cinema 4D and After Effects, specifically catered to help you prevail as a motion graphic designer. What's up, bros? Welcome to another Brograph motion graphics tutorial. We give you professional, time-saving tips, shortcuts, and lessons that help give you an edge over your fellow designers. Not only this, but our new Brograph talks help you in your file management, hardware configuration, and client relations. I love projects that scare me. When our art director comes to us and asks, Asks for something that I had never done before, man, it gets me pumped. Join us for live sessions, check out our crazy Cinema 4D experiments, or just watch our Fun with BroGraph series, where we show you practical applications for techniques learned in previous tutorials. Do this from the beginning, and your client is going to respect that, and they're going to respect you, and they're going to respect your time. Subscribe today and get automatic updates on the latest tutorials, tricks, tips, and inspiration brought to you by industry professionals Dave Koss and Matt Milstead, all with a slight dash of dry humor peppered in. Real nice banana. Brograph.com, your source for tutorials that will help you thrive in the motion graphics industry. 
Don't just play around with Cinema 40 and After Effects, master it, and make money by becoming indispensable at your workplace. We don't care how you get here, folks. Just get here. Subscribe now to BroGraph Tutorials. It's pretty good, I guess.